ice, ice, icicle. Pop, pop, popsicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. All right, so now that my mic's plugged in, in this video, I'll be sharing with you how I put together my sleeved balance XLR microphone cables, like this one. Been using this for the past few years. Just heads up, I'm not really an audiophile or anything. I used to play a few gigs as a drummer growing up. I went to school for computer engineering with a minor in music, and I even worked years in AV tech, and these all kind of grew my fondness for audio gear and audio cables as well. I know this type of content is new for my channel, but I really do enjoy sharing the process of building the stuff I've learned how to make. Feel free to leave a like on this video and a comment below if you want to see more videos like this. I'd also like to share how I put together my quarter inch instrument cables, as well as my RCA cables for various audio gear, if anyone out there is interested in that. Thanks again for checking out this video, and I hope this video is helpful for all of you audio heads out there. Going into the parts I'm using for this cable, I've got the Nutrik NC3MXX and NC3FXX XLR connectors. After trying a wide variety of different XLR connectors, I found these to be a great value for building custom XLR cables. For the cable, I'm using the Mogami Neglex 2534, which has been quite reliable in my other XLR cables. I've got about 9 feet of neon green TechFlex sleeving that I also commonly use for custom USB cables. Lastly, I'm using some old resistors from school projects where I'll just be using the leads for the ground connection. For tools, I've got a wire stripper as I'll be needing to strip 22 gauge wire. I've got a pair of pliers to help me shape my ground connection. And some micro cutters for trimming wires and sleeving. Some other tools I have on hand include a soldering iron and solder a fume vent, helping hands, and some tweezers. Disassembling these connectors is straightforward. Both sides include a rubber butt end that twists off, an inner portion that secures the connector onto the cable, the contact points which we can take out with a little poke with the back end of a pair of tweezers, and the metal shell. Both sides can be disassembled in the same manner. The next step I'll be doing is sleeving the cable. Two things that I do to prep the cable include making a clean straight cut and pulling on the cable jacket towards the end I'll be starting the sleeving. I want to make sure that there's no wire sticking out from the cable that can snag onto our sleeving. To sleeve the cable, I smoothly guide the bare cable into the sleeving while also making sure to remove any slack from the sleeved portion of the cable along the way. The reason I typically sleeve cables is mostly for aesthetic reasons, but sleeving adds another barrier of protection to your cable. For example, if you're constantly taking it out for gigs or whatnot, this should serve as some added durability. I'm using around 9 feet of sleeving, expecting a total length of 8 feet for my cable. I've learned it's much better to have an excess of sleeving to make sure your cable is your desired length. There's also quite a wide variety of sleeving out there, like paracord and braided variants. I do find it quite enjoyable customizing the cable colors for the people I'm making them for. Finishing up the sleeving, I leave about 1 inch of excess sleeving to make it a lot easier to add my XLR connector. I then run my hand across the entire length of the cable to remove any slack in the sleeving. At the end of the sleeving, I pull back the sleeving a bit and cut the cable. This leaves me with a bit of excess sleeving like I have on the other side. The next thing that I do is add the rubber butt end onto my cable. The excess sleeving makes this really easy to do. I then also add the plastic part of the connector, which you could probably add later, but I like doing this at this point to make sure that it fits onto the sleeved cable. I'll go ahead and do this for both sides. Now let's get started stripping. I use a pair of micro cutters to expose about one inch of bare cable. I then gently remove about an inch of jacket from the cable. I'm using a cable cutter for this, but you can also use something like an X-Acto knife to be more precise. Just make sure you don't remove any of the metal shielding inside. 
I tightly twist the metal shielding into two parts, then put them together to create a joint. I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Some cables are manufactured to have braiding paired into two groups. I'm creating the shield joint in this case to make soldering the shield to the connectors a bit easier. For the next step, I'm going to clean up our cable ends before soldering. I decided to trim the wires a little since they seemed a bit long when sizing them up to the connector. I'll also go ahead and trim this leaving, snip the inner cable insulation, and remove one part of the metal shield. And you probably get this by now, but I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Next, I'll be stripping the wires with my 22 gauge wire stripper. As this is a balance cable, I'll be pairing each color together and tightly twisting their exposed wires. You can also fan out the exposed wire strands a bit to create a better contact. I don't want to go too in depth in this video about the electrical characteristics of balanced cables, but in layman's terms, balanced cables are reliable in keeping out unwanted electrical noise, giving your audio signal more clarity. I'd highly recommend checking out some other great videos on YouTube to learn more about this. Now we'll start tinning our wires. With a soldering iron, I'll be adding some solder to the exposed wires and the shielding. I'm using my helping handstand to keep my cable in place while I work on the soldering. It's probably a good practice to also solder the shield joint I made earlier, but given there's no insulation between the shielding and the wires, I didn't want to risk melting shielding into the other wires. Next, I'll be adding a connection from the XLR shield pin to the enclosure of the connector. I'll be cutting off some leads from resistors to create this joint. I'll start by inserting the lead into the hole for the chassis, then use my pliers to create a kind of hook to keep it into place. I'll then finesse this around with the help of my pliers to make sure it fits into my shield pin. Then I'll cut off any excess I don't need. I've added a visual pinout of the XLR connectors that you can refer to for the rest of the soldering portion of this video. I'm going to go ahead and solder our shield connection here. Now that the male side's done, I'm going to go ahead and apply the same shield connection to the female side of the connector. I guess there's been quite a debate over the importance of connecting the shield to the connector chassis, and I could understand it could vary depending on the cable application. There is this Audio Engineering Society AES48 standard that goes over grounding practices, and I recommend you check it out if you feel so inclined to dive deeper into this rabbit hole. Making this connection has always provided great results for me, so I'll probably keep on doing it for my simple microphone cables. At this point, I'm going to add some solder to my XLR connectors to prepare them for making the final connections. Make sure to add a good amount of solder because we want these to be strong solder joints. And now we can finally get to soldering everything together. Before I get started, I decided to trim down the wires just a little bit more to make them fit better into the solder cups. As with any cable soldering, you really do want to minimize the amount of exposed wire to prevent any unwanted signal contact. I'll go ahead and follow the pinout and solder everything into place. I do make quite a few adjustments in the wire positions to make sure I can make the solder joints as clean as possible. I'll be honest, my first time soldering these XLR cables were pretty atrocious, but with some patience and constant adjustments, we can make some clean connections. Moving on to the female side of the connector, I feel that the size is a bit easier due to the size of the solder cups. The 
and here we have our connectors fully soldered. Now all that's left to do is to put the connector housings back together. I add the metal housings to the corresponding connector, pull up the black cylinder part and spin it around till it fits into place, then I'll bring up the black rubber end and screw it into the metal housing. And this pretty much wraps up the process of building our sleeved, balanced XLR cable. Thanks again for watching this video. If you got some value out of it, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing to the channel and liking the video. I hope to see you in my next custom audio cable video, and I hope you all have a great day and make wise choices. Ice, ice, icicle. Pop, pop, popsicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three.